Hello everyone, and welcome to Lambanar. Ambanar with a twist. What does it add? New idea groups, more monuments, and all a bunch of balance changes and such. And we're going to be playing today as the Order of the Iron Scepter, this little OPM little fella in the middle of Escan with a whole lot of potential for evil. <laughs> Let's jump in. Let's play with Magister Aldred Sil to Chevarin and see what we can do as the Order of the Iron Scepter. So, Escan was long ago home to the first and greatest empire of humanity, Castanor. It forged a common language across the continent and drove back both the deep woods as well as the fey and centaurs who lived within. However, that greatness faded after the day of ashen skies, and for centuries all that remained were bickering feudal kingdoms, weakened enough to allow Castan Ebenfrost to reunify the Empire in his own image when he founded the dreaded Black Castanor. It only became darker when the 52nd Castan was made a puppet by the sorcerer King Nickmare, who then led Black Castanor in a brutal war until most of Canor fell under his dominion. It would take the continent-spanning War of the Sorcerer King and the arrival of elves, talented in sword and magic, to bring him down. After Nickmare's death at the Battle of Trial Mount, Castanor fractured and Escan entered its chivalric period. Kingdoms like Castalia, Farinaean, and Adenica became lands of legend. Wars were rare and conflicts were instead handled by knightly duels and jousting tournaments. Perhaps the practice made the region weak, as the land crumbled when the green tide came after the fall of the dwarf hold Kugdir in 1424. Orcs, united by Corgus Dukinson, rushed out of the Serpent Spine in their millions. Castalia was first to fall, its white walls worthless against this threat from a new direction. The Knights of Edenica were slaughtered with their proud steeds, the Blade March's legendary sword Kalendal the Gleaming Blade was overcome, and the Marodic were forced into their mountains. In the west, as the Lilac Wars raged, many ignored these grim tidings. But following the war's end in 1443, many veterans marched east to confront the threat, earning the moniker the Marcher Lords. They were joined by a plethora of adventuring companies from as far afield as Laurent and Ketarata, as well as the Counts League, a remnant band of Castellarian Counts led by Carly and Blacktower, and a force of Griffin Riders led by Prince Griff the Young. This fort dealt to the Green Tide some of its first defeats, waging a bloody stalemate at the Battle of Rottenstep. Among the many that fell there was Corin, a red-haired squire of Benin. But that night, she arose as an avatar of the fallen god Agrados. Reborn and renewed, she founded the adventuring party Corin's Circle, rallied the Marcher Lords and led them all the way to Castanath itself. There, while defending Lothain Bluetusk Silmuna with her shield, and killing Dukinson with her sword, she was slain for the second time, and this time she would not rise. That was yesterday, the 10th of Neremend. Now, the morning after, the sun rises upon a new Escan, even if it's still infested by orcish and goblin warbands. Will you reforge one of the old kingdoms of old? Or create something new? Perhaps one day all Kanor will again be reshaped by the will of an Escani emperor. That's real. That's one of the best starting scripts I think I've ever read in this game. Like that. That was that was really well written, even if I fumbled a little bit. But that was dope. Great Conqueror. I am the Great Conqueror. Um, oh, I can't help it. Ten Splendor. I mean, it's it's the meta, right? It's the meta. We'll have some mythic conquerors. Sure. Why not? Why not? So, we are this little dude. We've got eight uh, troops to start with. That's not bad. Don't start with a leader, but I do know that I can make my ruler a war wizard. Um, we've got four people have rivaled me already. I think I'm just going to re-rival the people who have rivaled me. Because literally everyone. There we go. Um, and we're going to do a few little things as well. I would like to invite people into my... Confederation. Federation, even. So, yeah, the Order of the Ashen Rose can join me. And maybe the Stalwart Band in a day we can also join me. We're going to start with one diplomat, which is a bit rough. But we'll invite you as well, Stalwart Band. The Green Tide began 24 years ago when the Orc Corgus Dukinson, who claimed he was the son of their evil god, invaded and laid waste to the chivalric kingdoms of Escan. Only Corin, a mortal woman imbued by the powers of Agrados, the disgraced god of war could stop them. And to stop them, she did. 
and with her followers she united the marchers and adventurers in Escan into a single force of good, stopping the invasion of Western Cano dead in its tracks. Yesterday, on the 11th of the month of Neriment, Korgos Dukinson was slain by the heroine Corin in the city of Castanath, but in return she too lost her life. Corin is dead, but so too is Korgos. It's now to the rest of us to follow her legacy and bring an end to the green tide once and for all. Damn right, the fight does indeed continue. I gain 50 adventuring efficiency of the country and victors the green tide for travel development growth. Very nice. Uh, an heir is needed. We currently have no designated heir, so we can choose a magic man. Powerful mage. There we go. Always choose the magical mage. We'll lose, lose the adventuring efficiency and prestige, but it's a powerful mage. You can't really say no to that, right? Uh, he can call. He can be called Eladar. Sure. Adel Adelar. Whatever. Close enough. So, uh, with this mod, I can switch my Regent Courtness, I think, once every 10 years. Yeah. We can have a look at the magic menu. Um, we are proficient in everything, which is actually pretty dope. Fantastic. We're not going to do any magic just yet, though. Mission-wise, uh, you want me to have 150 dev. That's a late layer. Total army size, 75%, and I'd get morale of armies and adventuring efficiency. That's pretty good. Prestige of 80, that's going to take a while. But this total army size seems totally doable. If we migrate now and then we can uh, then we can build the people. Yeah, that seems like a better idea. So let's migrate immediately from Themenath to Burnall. Because my plan is to beat Corintar, the Iron Hammers, and the Pioneers Guild to Castanath. I want to own all of Castanath. That's the plan, at least. Let's migrate there. Cost me some military power. I think that's fine. I think this is how you you play the uh, Order of the Iron Scepter. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not certain, but we'll we'll see. That seems like a good idea to start with, and then we'll build two extra units there. Um, yeah, I think it's time to unpause and keep going. And the reason I am not selecting a current deity is because if I select a deity, I will eventually get a mission or sorry an event talking about Corin and whether I want to have her as my deity, and I would like that. And switching to her costs some prestige, which is not great. All right, so we've got Adventure Army. While we're heavily reliant on the average adventurer for resettling the land, we do still need a group of adventurers we can trust to always be ready to defend our borders and push back the orcs. Very true. 20 years, 10% morale of armies. Lovely. I need two stability for the next one for 100 ducats. Hopefully we get an event, because I'd rather not pay for that stability. There we go, the 10th Pantheonic Council. There are rituals and forms associated with a Pantheonic Council, laid down in centuries since worship of the Regent Court was first codified. There must be a gathering of every deity's high priest. There must be at least seven days of discussion, further seven days of deba debate. There are required rites of thanksgiving, of divination, and of worship. None of these rules were followed in the so-called 10th Pantheonic Council. It was a conclave of unruly adventurer clerics, many barely literate in the teachings of their deity, led by the previously unknown Dominic of Gallows Peak. It is less a discussion than a wild speculation. Corin was not slain in truth, but instead moved beyond cursed Agrodos' heresy and ascended to take that fallen god's place in the court. Or perhaps it's less a proclamation than a wildfire. These beliefs grew fast among Escani adventurers, followed them back to their homes across Canor, and there spread like a spark in dry kindling. Aldred has well noted the growing faith in her ascension, and it seems today the temples themselves have issued statements agreeing to this status. They note further discussion is necessary about her relationship to Agrados and all his failings, but they shall not stand before the tide. Let it be proclaimed across the order of the Iron Scepter, so all may learn that Corin has joined the Regent Court as a goddess of war, bravery, and heroism. Huzzah! So. Ooh. 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 That's nice. I'll take that. 10 prestige and adventuring efficiency if I just take it now. What I was planning on doing was saying a newcomer to the court and then choosing it. But if I gain bonuses for choosing her now, perfect. 10,000 troops and a decent amount of money or a decent amount of income for an OPM. I'll take it. What I could do is attack flung head. 21k. We can beat the crap out of them, right? Flung head as a war wizard leader. So he does. Well, I don't like that at all. 
Why do you have a why do you have a war wizard? What if I like move here, attack and immediately move in and, and crush his face, and so he doesn't have an army anymore? Could that happen? Could that work? The alternative is whoever owns all of this. Who is this supposed to be? Blood Gorger? You have so much land. You're allied with Blade Breaker and Dog Eater. It's fifteen K total troops. I could do that. Mm, if I jump him, he doesn't make a war wizard. I feel like that's a good idea. We, however, will be making a war wizard. And now that I've taken Corin as my patron saint, one one extra shock, which is nice. The most recent deity to join the Pantheon and the reincarnation of the disgraced god of war, Agrodos, Corin ascended to the role after sacrificing her life to defeat the early green tide in 1444. Corin now serves as the new god of war, which has been left empty since Agrodos's defeat during the god's war. Beautiful. And if I wanted to change, I could use the region court deity switch uh, every 10 years to change to someone else. But Corin seems like a great idea. So make Magister a war wizard. And hopefully we get someone good with lots and lots of lovely shock pips. You know, eight shock pips, eight, eight shock pips will do the job. It will, it will do the job. Declare war on you. We want to stack wipe this 7k ASAP. Let's wait until the first. Oh, he's got 8k now. Time for you to die, hopefully, maybe. Don't make a war wizard, don't make a war wizard, don't make a... Okay, he got a 1-3. Okay, this is fine. Rincon Dottieri? 275 a month. I don't think I want to do that. It doesn't have a leader, but it's 11k troops. I think I'm going to accept that, actually. Corin can come and help me, that's fine. Also, we've uh, done a mission, the Green Threat. We must never forget, nor forgive the orcs for what they have done. It's time to finish what Corrin started and strike back and reclaim a scan from the green skins, or die trying. Agreed. Moral of armies and extra infantry combat ability. Let's go. Oh, look at the morale advantage! Let's go! And that's a stack wipe. That is a stack wipe. Let's go. You can go and siege that guy, and Kittle's Vord will eventually do stuff, probably. The victory condition here... Oh, I could even take land down here. Not a whole lot, though. It's it's quite expensive to take the land. But I could take all of your land and maybe Humax Rest as well. That might be what I do. Yeah, I think Corrin was a good idea. Even though I'm losing a duck in a month, hiring Corrin to uh, very good idea. Uh, you've got an extra 6k from Dead Fang. That is the Silver Dock Sieged. You want peace now. Negative. Not gonna happen. Actually, let's stay in my own land while I can get a bit of um, replenishment on my army. And get back up to 10,000 troops and then we'll go after Earworm. Alright, 10,000 troops. Let's get our way over to Earworm. Nice. Oh, Boy, ah, hmm, okay. I don't really want to fight that. I'll probably win because of my general, but I don't want to fight that, so. Let's see what we can take from you. War reps, money. Okay, actually, you're down to 10,000 now. Getting rid of Groundhog there was great. Now there's just the earworm troops? We could cast some siege magic. I don't know if we need to do that. Greater fireball. What does that cost me anyway? 10 mil? Okay, it's, it, 10 mil is nothing. 10 mil is actually nothing. So let's try it. Working similarly to a trebuchet, a powerful mage can create a ball of flame the size of a small house to fling across enemy walls and battlements. 70% chance of greater fireball hits. Controlling such a large amount of ele elemental energy is hard. An Aldrich hit... Directly against the enemy wall, scorching it, but leaving its defenders behind it undisturbed. Fuck. So nothing happens. What a waste of 10 mil. Anyway, that's you defeated. I just want your money, because I can't actually get anything else from this war. Pillage doesn't do anything. We'll humiliate you, because you're my rival and war reps. And send demand. Beautiful. March back to my land, and we'll peace out with you. I think war reps and the rest in money. Which is not a whole lot of my Ten ducats, but we'll take it anyway. Alright. So now my land is this. 
And that also means that I can migrate to Smallmere, but isn't there something I need to do first? Do I need to wait until we've got this devastation up by an amount? I believe that's how it works. You need to wait until the devastation is high so that when you migrate, it's better. I don't know exactly how it works. Also, Corintar, I don't want to pay you any more money. So, can we cancel Condottieri? How long are you supposed to wait? Because you're like taking the development that's here and then you're bringing it with you or something along those lines. But I'm not sure. Yeah, let's wait until I get to 30 and then we're going to migrate to Small Mia, I think. Also, I should probably try and ally the people in my federation. Oh, that actually was totally exactly what I needed to do. We're not the only ones fighting the Orcs here in Escan, and since we have a common threat and lots of free land, we have a clear reason to work together. 50 diplomatic power. Let's go. Different issues require different people. Different resources require different skilled workers. As such, we can help our neighbor with their issues, and they can help us with ours. Noise. Number of allies, at least two. I don't think that's true. But anyway, 50 admin power I will take, and some reform progress. All right, we're gonna migrate now to Small Mia. So the six development here, we've currently got 22, but when we migrate, we've now got 20 development. Oh, that's, that's how it's supposed to be. And I can immediately migrate here because it's, I think it's because it's in my area. Like this is all mine. It's due to poor mistreatment, unrest or devastation. The population of the goblin minorities in Small Mia is decreased. Good. I mean, I don't see a problem with this. It seems like an absolute win. Do have some unrest here, but probably fine. Yeah, it's just from the goblins. No one cares about the goblins. Mm. Oh, Blood Gorger has entered Castanath. Not a fan. Could declare war on them and I'd probably win. Especially if I could, like, snipe one army and stack wipe it real quick. Now they've got the War Wizard. Ten shock. Six. Oh my god, they got way better stats than I did. That's... Did I get really unlucky? That wouldn't surprise me if I did. So what does Corrin get out of this war then? I keep going with Corrin. It's Corrin Tar. It's very different. It's Corrin Tar. Uh, it looks like they didn't get anything. Some thought our decision to favor quantity over quality was foolish, and it would lead to decline in leadership, or even make our army a bit of a joke. But they were wrong. Our new, larger army has unlocked the talents of our military minds, leading to even better levels of organization. Beautiful. 50% cheaper, force limit modifier man. I think I'll go after Blood Gorger now. Oh, Federation Cohesion has reached maximum value. What is this all about? So, my Federation Cohesion, can I choose one of these to gain then? Is that what we're doing? Monthly Federation favor growth, uh, tribal development growth, goods produced modifier, attrition for enemies, settle cost, institution spread, Diplomatic front, I need trust at 75 for that. That would be super handy, actually. Um, or th three or more Federation members, me and two others, yep. And I need trust at 75. Let's go settle cost to make it cheaper to move our guys. Oh, and is this what goes up? Each month we gain tribal development from grazing lands below 100 devastation. Gain additional tribal development from grazing on land in tribal land belonging to another nation. Okay. So going to other places is probably better. Um, the amount of tribal development is gained will be divided by the current tribal development if it's higher than one. Okay. So yeah, I think while I increase devastation here, um, that means the tribal development is going to go up. And this is the extra development we get for moving. Gotcha, that's how that works, I think. Also, I forgot we have factions. Marches give me morale, force limit, ID cost goes down, different relations go down, okay. Pioneers, development cost, settled chance. Um, so this is for when we finally settle down. Fortune seekers, goods produce modifiers, good. Okay, March is definitely what we want to stay on right now, though. Lodge Gorger is there with his entire army. I believe uh, there is a river here. Or a ripper between North and South Castanath. Yes. So I want to attack him basically from Trial Wood would be my best bet. And hopefully they only retreat to Eldran. El Eldran or whatever it is. 
It began as it always does with rumours, gossiping and sneaked glances filled with contempt and malice. If this challenge to Magister Aldred's rule goes too far, that he was not elected properly to the seat of the Ordinary of the Iron Scepter, people will no longer speak but might try to depose him. That would be bad. Okie dokie, declare the war, let's go. What did you get? A four maneuver. Yeah, so it was a good idea. Four maneuver and four shock as well, actually. Why are you retreating this way? You're probably retreating to Bladebreaker's land. I'm going to siege this first. Yeah, I'm going to go here. So, government reform. Exploring the frontier. Migration cost, negative 15%. We've got stripping land, tribal development growth, or we've got pioneer mission for reform progress growth. I don't know wanna, which one I want to go with. To see where you stand, you must leave it behind. We have maps and charts of the old Escan are plenty, but the one before us has be, been reshaped by the green tide. We'll need to learn it anew while keeping up with the roaming goblin and orcish warbands. By ensuring we have well-built wagons and that every member can set up and take down camp within minutes, we'll speed the company on its way and Escan on its regrowth accordingly. We seek to recreate new Askan out of the ashes of the old, but that will not be an easy process, and we will have to lean heavily on the land to support its rebuilding. We cannot leave a single stone unturned, resource unexploited, or lost treasure unfound if we are to succeed in our quest. Most adventurers lent the Marcher Lords their sword and shield, thinking of glory and loot, confident in their ability to take on an orc and a goblin. But on the 11th of Neremont, 1444, they woke up faced with a quest most were unprepared for, rebuilding nations. Just as we would study the dragon before slaying one, we must immediately get to work on an organized code of conduct and all other pieces of administration we will need in the months, years, and decades to come. Hmm. I think I'll take the reform progress growth. I feel like that's a good idea. I'm not sure, but we'll try it. And we're going to cast another fireball. Oh, the Renaissance has fired. Since their arrival in the 11th century, the enigmatic elves and their half-elven progeny have led the world in patronizing artists and scholars willing to explore the ancient elven and Demirian societies of their forefathers. As a cultural movement, the Renaissance already encompasses most of the region and has had a profound impact on literature, art, philosophy, and music. Enlightened scholars are also analyzing the society in which they live, comparing it to the ideals of the classical philosophers. At the turn of the 1450, Renaissance humanism has grown more into a mature movement, ready to permeate all aspects of society. A new ideal for rulers, as well as those who are ruled, is spreading as quickly as the early printers can distribute copies of these new ideas. A true Renaissance humanist is an expert on everything from politics and philosophy to art, textual analysis, music and architecture. The Renaissance is now ready to reshape the world to benefit its classical ideas. So I don't know where it popped up. All the way over there. Cool. Greater fireball, let's go. 70% chance, we win. A tremendous fireball floats over Eldred's head before being flung right into the defender's ranks, exploding in fire and death. Several men can be seen on fire, some even flinging themselves off the walls. Minor penalties. How minor? It just it gave me one? Is that all I got? I feel like that's all I got. Feels like not a lot. Not gonna lie. Should we cast another fireball? I feel like we should cast another fireball. Let's cast another fireball. Burn. Is it just going to give me an extra one pip here? Yes. That, that is all it does. But that is enough. Let's go and see if we can siege some of Bladebreaker. Even if I don't siege their capital, we might be able to force them out of the war. Oh, they're still recovering. Ugh, Bladebreaker jumped in on this. This hurts. This hurts so much. Oh, God. I should not have done that. Yo. Yo, can I just, like... Can I just... Can I... No, I can't do shit. Okay, balls. That was a terrible idea. Yes, I will take your condottieri. Corintar, save me. I do not have the men to recover that. I got baited. I got actually baited by the AI. Let's see if we can get Dog Eater out of the war. And can you do something? Like, something. 
anything at all, Corintar. Just be useful. That was a good start. Strange glow has shone even through the solid rock, casting curious faces in its cyan hue. And it's been a nice enough spot for a luncheon. And loose lips often uh, saw, soon saw that the word of Dame Seer's telltale sign brought the eyes of our nation upon those weathered stones. While many of the order of the Iron Scepter's people grow eager at the prospects of such a bo uh, bountiful deposit of Dame Seer, as the deposit should bring wealth to their land, whispers of dissent run on the breeze, fearful of the change coming into their home. Soon, the fist of our nation will clench around the order of the Iron Scepter. And see that the Dame Steer finds its way into trustworthy, deserving hands. That's dope. Hello. I'll take Dame's Tear. Why not? Why does Dog Ear have so many men? I can get him out of the war, though. Hey, war reps, maybe? Some money? Smudge money. You want to just get... Oh, you will give me this now. You want to give me any more? All right, I'll just take that. That was a very, very rough war that we did not enjoy. And you did nothing, you actual worthless ass. I think what I might do is consolidate regiments. And now I've got four slots free. We can get novice adventurers. That Actually, you know what? We don't need them yet. We'll get them when we need them. Next time we go to war. While goblins are typically lacking in strength and bravery, they make up for it in their cunning and innovation. Consisting of the more creative minds across her land, goblins will oftentimes find the most surprising solutions to issues that can plague traditional scholars for years. Now, one of the most innovative of their kind have come to offer their services to the Magister and use their mind for the betterment of the realm, provided we pay for any damages that may occur during their research. No. We're here to rid the land of green skins. We, we don't we don't want them. Hey there! I just want to say thank you very much for watching. If you want to support me and the content I make, then I encourage you to go check out my Patreon. Patrons get their name at the end of every video, as well as priority seeding in any multiplayer games we host over on my Discord, which you should also join. Links in the description.